In every every summer is the same. If you're a United fan, you go crazy. They just I... don't know whether it's Matt Judge, Ed Woodward, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I don't care. The tea lady, the the guy at the security <laughs> gate. I don't care. They, I... They're incompetent <laughs> when it comes down to transfers, and that's why their own fans are frustrated. I swear, some of their players may be frustrated by the lack of reinforcement, of strengthening, by how, by how bad, bad they, they are, are on the transfer with the, the, the agency. agency. What do clubs? and agents think about Manchester United in the transfer market. As you saw there from the quick intro, Julian Laurens, he's a man who understands the United fans' frustration. I'm happy to say I'm joined by Julian today to talk about United in the transfer market, Ed Woodward, Matt Judge, maybe the tea lady as well. Thank you very much for your time today, Julian. Thank you for having me. Man United fans have been frustrated for a long time at how our club acts in the transfer market. And it's strangely not really talked about too much in the wider press, but you spoke about it. Do, do you really feel that United fans are justified to be frustrated at how the club has acted this summer and how the club has been acting for a long time in the transfer market? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, what, what won me up really was when the club signed a briefing that they didn't really understand the people's frustration. They didn't understand why fans were so critical on social media towards the club and people. And I was like, really? Are you really? Are you, are you crazy? Are you not, are you not serious? Can you not see that you had a good season last year and that you, you, you should build on it? You should build on it by strengthening your squad to be even better, to close the gap with City and Liverpool and, and now I guess with Chelsea. Can't you see that your fans believed again after last season, after all those years since Fergie left in 2013 of, of, symbolic situations and then finally they believe so why don't you build on this by having a good transfer window for one you know preparing it early and starting it early and, and making the right signings that you want in the right position the right players you want not plan b c or d with the right guy the plan a the top of your list all of that and i said like and you don't you still don't understand why fans are frustrated because we are in september almost in october sorry almost and then you've only signed Donny van der Beek, who really, let's be honest, is a great player and a great guy, but this is not really what you needed or what you should have signed in, as your priority. So that really won me up. And also when ESPN said, like, give us your opinion about it, I just, I just let go, man. I'm not a United fan at all, but I, I can feel that frustration. I go to Old Trafford a lot every season to report on United games. And I can see, I know loads of United fans, a lot of my friends who have that frustration. And, and listen, it's not easy to sign players. I've, I've worked with agents for years and years. I know how difficult it is. I know it's a jungle and it's hard to, uh, to, to negotiate, to talk to clubs, to talk to agents, intermediaries. I know it's difficult, but it's difficult for everybody else. So how come some clubs are better than others? Because they have the right people in place. It's as simple as that sometimes. Uh, well, that kind of led on to my next question there, saying what do you feel United are doing wrong in the transfer market that other clubs seem to be finding? Chelsea, for example, have signed seven players this summer. What do, you, what do you think exactly that United are doing wrong? What, where I understand is that you are one of the biggest clubs in the world. You know, right up there with I don't know, Real Madrid, yes, they are the top two, for example. So I know when you go to a club to sign a player, you feel that, OK, maybe they're going to try to you know, up the price because it's United, because it's us. But OK, but that's, that, that's not an excuse for still missing out on all the targets that you had for the last God knows how many years. So... Certainly, if you look at the team they've got in place, I mean, I, I don't think the, the scouting network is that bad. I think, you know, Marcel Bout is, is a good guy. I think they've got good scouts in places in different countries, especially in France, who's with the market I know the best. They've got people doing good work, watching players, you know their thing. It's not, it's not an issue at all. So then you have to look at the people who try to make those transfers happening. And I don't know my judge at all. I know of my judge. And I certainly know people who have been in dealings with him who who negotiated with him, who've been in his company, and, and a guy that worked for so long in finances and in banking industry, maybe, maybe he still has a lot of things to learn in football to be able to, to get the signings and the targets that he wants. I mean, I wouldn't go as far as what Patrick Sevra, the story that he told in his, uh, on, on his social media the other day about you know, people calling him saying that Madrid doesn't pick up the phone. I don't know if he does. The people I know, they speak to him. I don't know if it's hard to get hold of him. But certainly it shouldn't be. But, but where, I, where, I, where I understand his position is that if you're United, you will have a lot of people calling you. If you're Edward Wood, Madge, 
or muscle. But again, you will have a lot of agents, a lot of people calling you to try to sell you good players, bad players, average players, very good players. That, that's that's what you know. They, that's what agents do. They they call you and call you incessantly to try to sell you their players, even if that's not the position you're looking for, or you're not interested in the player, or the player is just not good enough. Or, and that so. I know how it is for sporting director. Again, I've been in contact with a lot of them for many, many years. I know how difficult it is, but you still need to, you know, you still need to do the job to your best of your ability, which is when you identify a target, you, you, you need to sign it. You can't be picky for two, three, four million pounds. You know, if you speak to Jude Bellingham, who is an incredible talent, and you know you're in competition with a club like Dortmund, you have to be able to convince him and his dad and his family that United is the right club for him instead of missing out again on a very, very talented player who then went for another club because he thought that was better for him than United. So certainly the people in place have to do a better job. I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, if you don't want to pay the price for a player or the release clause or you don't find the right argument to convince Erling Haaland or Jude Bellingham to sign for your club, there's an issue there. I th personally, I, I, clearly, it's obvious that Matt Judge and Ed Woodward, as two previous investment bankers, shouldn't be working in the roles they're currently doing as, it, it, because they're not football men, as Patrice Everest said, as you're sort of alluding to there. Now, the thing I'm really interested in is you, you, you mentioned it there about agents and what do agents really think about United in the transfer market? Do they, are we a sort of laughing stock in comparison to the likes of Chelsea and PSG? Uh, what do agents really feel when it comes to negotiating with United? Well, certainly, I, I can't. I can't talk for you know for every single agent. I, I don't know what Jorge Mendes thinks. I don't know what Mino Raiola thinks. But certainly, some of the agents that I deal with and that I know, you know, finding it difficult at times. I think there's there's an issue there about uh, the negotiating techniques. For example, there's there's, there's stuff about um, you know when when United are interested in a player. I mean, you could see it anyway how long it took for the Harry Maguire did to go through, how long it took for the Juan Bissaka did to go through. You know, all those deals that never happened when United were in a very strong position and those deals should have happened. You know, this is one of the biggest clubs in the world. Players should queue to play for United. They should queue to play for a club like this. A bit like whatever I was saying in the, in the sense that, you know, before when they were in for a player, it was, it would happen like this. There would be no issue. There would be no problem, no snag, no delay, nothing like that. Certainly, there is, there is now. And, and that's, that's what I find the most baffling is, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying my judge and Ed Woodward are bad people. I, 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 you know, maybe they just still have a lot of things to learn in football. But this is a very unusual setup, let's be honest. There's not many other top, top clubs where the key people who decide are not football people. You know, and, and we've talked a lot about United finally hiring a sporting director, for example, or a director of football or anything like this, which is clearly very obviously missing there. And, and yet they're not doing it. So I don't know why they're not doing it. I don't know if it's because they can't find the right guy or because they, they don't trust someone in that kind of position or would that be taking over or working on what Judge and Woodward are doing? I, I don't know what the issue is. Is it the Glazers who don't want one? Because you don't really, I don't know, they don't think it's a good idea. I don't know, because if you look at US sports, for example, where you would think the Glazers have a template there, they all have a general manager who, you know, who does transfers and who's usually very good at what he, you know, who's been there before and worked in the industry, knows the industry inside out. They don't hire banking people to be GMs at an NBA club, for a franchise, for example. So, I, I, I don't know really if, you know, if, if that's the answer. Maybe it is. I certainly believe that that would help a lot because let's not forget as well that, you know, you need contact. That's, that's how it works. You need people. You need facilitators. You need people who would help you sign Erling Haaland. Not, not just, you, know, just, you see what I mean? You, that, that, that's also how it works. And, and I think if you don't have that kind of knowledge, that kind of network, that kind of address book, that kind of just kind of contact, then then you then you struggle. And if you're a bit too rigid, and if you don't, you know, maybe know all the codes, then that's when you that's when you struggle. Now United obviously 
were interested in Regulon but didn't do it because of that buyback clause. And the left back we're looking at now is Alex Tellez, who was also linked with PSG, but I think PSG are looking more towards Rudiger from Chelsea now. Uh, it was. Is there any chance that Tellez goes to PSG instead of United this summer? Do you think? No, I mean they've 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 abandoned that um, that that the, that opportunity. I think because they're not going to sign a left back, they're going to sign a centre back and a midfielder now. The the thing with Tellez is he only has one year left on his contract, but the the price that Porto are asking is already is, is really high for someone who who will be free in six months to sign anywhere for free. So I can see why Kluge were a bit reluctant. I can see why United are trying to lower that price a bit. But there's a point where if, if that's really the player that you need in a position that you need to strengthen, and I'm not saying that United have to go for a back in priority, but it's clearly what they have identified as, as a position to strengthen. Sometimes you just have to buy the bullet and pay, let's say, £20 million, even if someone is free in a year, and, and not trying at some point to go down to 16 or 17. You know, there's a point where, you know, this, this is not, a, uh, this is not a, a, a carpet business where, you, you know, you go in and say like, oh, come on, let's do the carpet for, you know, 25 quid instead of 30 quid. This is, this is football. So of course, it's difficult. Of course, as we said before, it's a jungle. And if Porto are adamant they want 20 million pounds for Alex Dayers, and you start going like, oh, what about 18? Porto are not going to make you a favour. They say, well, we don't care. We keep him for a year. He's, you know, he's one of our best players. He's not the best player last season with all the goals and the assists that he, get, he scored and, and gave and, and free kicks and, and everything that he brings in the game. So we're happy to keep him. He can go on a free next summer and then you can have him. But it was the same with Bruno Fernandes. He took 18 months for United to sign Bruno Fernandes because they were being a bit picky with the price. I mean, imagine just, just imagine how more better the team could have done had Bruno Fernandes arrived 18 months before. I mean, we would obviously never know, but you, there, there's a good possibility you think that well, they, they would have been much better, much quicker. I mean, I, I, I didn't understand the Bruno Fernandes delay. And even in January when we did sign him, we signed him right at the end of the window. And it's now we're here, what, we're here, what is it, a week or so before the transfer window is closed and we still need a right winger. I think we still need a centre-back and we probably still need a central midfielder as well, but we haven't signed any. Obviously, one central midfielder we do have is Paul Pogba. We've got a bit of a French connection going on now with Pogba and Martial. Uh, how happy is Paul Pogba at Manchester United? And do you know anything about the um, contract extension talks that are supposedly going on at the moment? Yeah, I think he's, he's, he's really happy. Certainly, I don't, I don't know how he feels about how the transfer window you know, he's going, really. I, 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 I won't lie. I don't know. I don't know if he's happy. I don't know if he's frustrated. I don't know if he if he thinks there's still time. I, I I really don't know. But certainly he in the last few weeks and few months when he came back from the injury and after the the, the restart, he certainly was really happy. I think he wants to extend his deal there. I think they will keep talking. Um, I I cannot see why they would not find an agreement with Paul Pogba. I don't know why the club would not want to 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 see him renewing that deal and signing the new contract. So I'm, I'm really optimistic. I think he is. I know it's not easy to deal with, you know, right now, uh, especially when it comes to, to Paul Pogba, but I, I can't see why this one could not happen unless they ask for crazy money, which I don't think they will. They just, you know, they, they, they just want him to be a huge part in the football club because he is, you know, they know how much money comes in in sponsorship deals thanks to Paul Pogba being there. He, every, I mean, every time I go, and there's a match program. He's on every single page, almost with every single sponsor that is putting a lot of money in the club. So, you know, he has a value, and I and I really hope that United can see that. And 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 with Martial, it's very similar. There was a time where he was really unhappy under Jose Mourinho, really really unhappy. And now it's a completely different man and a completely different player. I think his private life. Um, he's so happy in his private life that you could see on the page he had his best season, the best season of his career last year. And, and I thought it was fantastic at time. And I, I just think they, there's no limit for the talent that he has. And we could see that when he was 15, he was already so good. It's just maybe, and like others, it took him a bit more time. He had to be a bit more mature. There was a few issues there and there. 
And it was a big move, let's not forget, when he was so young and very quite inexperienced at the time. So I really expect Martial to kick on from last season and have an, an even better season this year. Well, I hope so as well, because that was his best season. And you're right, his ceiling is just so high and he's, he's clearly nowhere near his peak yet. And that is exciting for United fans. And it would be nice if he had Jaden Sancho to play alongside him, but of by course. the looks of things, by the looks of things, that's not happening. But thanks very much for your time today, Julian. It's, it's really, as I said at the start of the video, it's really good to see yourself speaking on ESPN, speaking about United fans' frustrations and why they're justified. Because we don't feel it, it's getting enough airtime, I suppose, when other fans of other clubs can look at us and say, "Look, you spent." nearly a billion since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. You have nothing to complain about. But the reality is a lot of that money was wasted uh, and yeah. a lot of the transfer negotiations at the club are just drawn out when they don't need to be. It's painful when it doesn't need to be. Uh, and hopefully that will change. But the reality is it, it, it probably won't because unfortunately United, it all comes down to the Glazers' ownership and it comes down to what works for them. And what they want, it doesn't really match what the fans want. And that's an unfortunate reality for United fans. No, you're right. And, and I really know what, I really hope that Ed Woodward and Matt Judge become good in a way. You know, that they can, they can, they can, I think United deserve that. They deserve to have a good leadership at the, at the top of the pyramid. You know, people who run that club that you don't miss out on Jude Bellingham or Erling Haaland or Gabriel or Regan and that, you know, because United deserves to be you know, to have those top players that they, they're aiming at and they're targeting, not missing out on them. And I really think, I really hope that things improve and that, I don't know, they learn, they, they improve, they, there's a progression there, maybe they employ a few more people around them to help them, I don't know, anything. Because that's what United fans deserve, that's what I think the club deserves. And what the current team and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I started my, that little video for his friend saying, you know, I would understand if Solskjaer was frustrated. Because if you're a manager and you've had the, the season that you had last year, that was quite positive in many respects, and you want to build on it, it's difficult if if you're not getting the players that you want or the players that you need. We we knew there was a problem in the depth of the squad last season because after restart, all the play, the same players kept playing and playing and playing, and and yet nothing has been done for that depth in the squad at all apart from Van der Beek. So I really hope people come good at the club because you have to have a great leadership to be able to go back to the top like you were before. I really hope you're right. Every United fan hopes you're right. Thanks very much, as I said, for your time today, Julian. Uh, make sure you follow Julian over My pleasure. on Twitter. Anytime. Anytime. Well, hopefully we'll have you on again and maybe it's after we've made a signing, but maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, man.